There's my black orange, and then the gray is right next to it. What we're going to do, put the jaws of our amp clamp right here on this black orange wire. All right, so amp clamp is connected. We're on a 20 amp scale. I already showed you guys where we're going. I like my cranking tool. Yep. Yeah, that line right mm -hmm. there. That little blip at the beginning. You really want to see an oscillation there. Not all coils will have them. Again, Scanner Dan or premium stuff. That's the page we're on. You guys that are watching this, so let me talk to you for a second. Where you'll find coil, primary, current, oscillations. You'll find uh, some lectures in my chapter one material on this. You'll also find lectures in my fuel injector circuit on this, which is be chapter 17 and 18. And you'll find them also in my uh, chapter 22, no start, no spark diagnosis chapters where I talk about turn on oscillations of coils and things like that. That's where we are. Uh, it's time to pull the cap off and do a visual inspection. And if everything's good in there, we're done. It's got a shorted secondary winding in this ignition coil. All right, pulling the cap off. For those of you watching right now, making fun of me for this air intake, you have to forgive me. This car came with this crappy ass air intake and I couldn't find the factory one. So if any of you guys have access to a factory 1.8 94 Toyota air box, I'll pay you for it. Or a fuel tank. <laughs> well, we do need, no, I just need the filler neck, not the whole tank, but I can get the filler neck. I just can't find the air box anywhere. Where is my big Larry light? Right there. <laughs> That's what it's called. I know, I think it's hilarious. It's been a good light, but uh, what I don't like about it is the, I don't, who yeah, needs a blinking annoying. red light? It's annoying, I have to like do that every time I turn it on and off. Got some oil in there. A little piece of something. All right, a little battery interruption there. What we're gonna do is a test on the coil itself now. The spark actually comes from here. This is your coil. The spark goes into this tab and then comes out of this tab. Mm. So it goes in here, comes out here. So on the distributor itself, we have spark that comes out of here, it runs through a path and then goes into the rotor right here. And then from there, it goes through this way and distributes it to these four guys, one, two, three, four, which are corresponding to the cylinders. This guy distributes it, so watch when I crank it. That's your rotor. That's cool. That distributes the spark where it needs to go, okay? Oh, and it does it one, one it, like. This fires four times, Yeah. and this one's distributing it one, per rotation to each cylinder, right? When it hits yeah, that sorry. one point, it's mechanically timed to the pistons of this engine. And is that connected to? The camshaft's driving this. Yeah. And that's why I wasn't worried about the timing belt. Because uh, timing belt's over there, and it drives the cam, which drives the distributor, which, drives which drives the rotor. That's what I was ask about was yeah. the timing belt. All right, this is gonna be the test of all tests which really you could have done from the get-go. Once we found the tack was bouncing, we smelled fuel, maybe all we had was a test light and a paper clip. We could troubleshoot this car with a test light and a paper clip. So what we wanna do um, is, oh, you know what though? If this was all you were using, you would have to confirm battery feed to this because we confirm battery feed based on this coil current ramp test that's still on the screen up here. And the amperage that we have, you know, you're talking, about um, about six amps of current flow. So six amps of current says we have to have a good power and a good ground to the coil to have that kind of current. Now, if you didn't have a scope, it's as simple as measuring that same black orange wire and making sure that it lights your test light. I'm not worried about that. We don't need to do it. I was just kind of backtracking if all you had was a test light. All right, so air gap here, we want to see spark. It's there but it's super weak. This is a shorted yeah. coil. We're done. This has a shorted ignition coil. So it, this coil should jump a gap about that far. Really? It should jump about, you know, people ask me all the time, how far should a coil jump? And you know, I always say at least a half an inch, but a good coil will jump an inch, right? So I'm going to keep moving it closer. Watch. <laughs> so 
So we have Spark, but we don't have, it's not enough. The reason we didn't have Spark when we checked it even at the distributor cap, if you remember early on, is it was so weak that it couldn't even travel from here and then into the rotor and out onto the cap itself. This is a faulty coil for this system. Uh, if I'm in the field, guys, I wanna be clear, I'm not messing around. It's getting plugs, wires, cap, rotor, coil, okay? Uh, in fact, you probably on this design, not probably, this would be a remanufactured distributor. You'd put a whole distributor in it. Now, if I can just get a coil, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm comfortable with the igniter. I'm comfortable with the pickups that are inside of here. Um, the coil itself is where we'll go. I'm gonna be a little bit cheap because it's my son's car. I'm trying to save him money. And I, I think I'm comfortable symptom-wise that, um, this didn't have an open plug wire, right? And my main concern is with the coil damage would be with an open plug wire and an open plug wire is not gonna be intermittent. It's gonna be all the time and it's gonna have a misfire and that's gonna um, uh, potentially kill the coil. So just given the symptoms, I think we'll be okay. We're gonna stop here. We're gonna get a coil for this. We'll do a follow up, quick follow up and then we'll be done. Well, we thought we were done, and then I went out in my shed and I found the distributor from the old engine. Now this one had some issues. This one had some kind of a, uh, a crank sensor issue. One of the NE or G signals was messed up on this one, so, um, but the coil should be fine, okay? Rotor. Plastic, plastic cover. So yeah, this this is gonna be a no cost fix for Jake. Oh yeah. Cause I had the parts that I needed. Just not the vision or eyesight for my sockets anymore. And I'm using standard. These are these are metric. Not standard, but Oh by the way, since we're in here, here's your igniter right here. And then this piece here on the inside, we'll wait till I get the coil out, you'll see it better. Your pickup coils are inside. You'll see the one, there's, there's the one pulse. See the tab on the top right there? Yeah. There's your one pulse signal and your four pulse one's down inside further. Scanner Danner being a parts changer. I am, changing parts, man. <laughs> coil positive has two leads on it. Coil negative has one, so remember that. The reason it has two is power to the igniter comes off of that too. All right, now we got two Phillips on this side, four Phillips. Question is, oh sweet. I can change them right up top. I'm looking at the one on the car. I'm like, this is going to be nice and straightforward, but only if I can get to all of these bolts without taking the distributor off, and I totally can. Nice. Have to pick the one. Caleb asked me a good question off camera again, which is, Dad, you told us when it rained out, Jake had a misfire, and what about the plugs and wires? And Jake, Caleb's right. I should still be doing plugs and wires on this based on that symptom, but I am, to be honest with you guys, I am not completely sure if it was a raining out thing or if it was a cold engine or a temperature thing. So, anyway, we have a coil for this and we are changing it right now, regardless. There's your ignition coil. All right, now we gotta take the one off the car. Gotta pop the rotor off first. Take this plastic housing off. Look, I'm changing parts. A little bit harder to get to the bolts. Not too bad though. I was just excited that I'll get to film it starting. Yeah, Caleb likes that. So do my viewers. My viewers like to see the cars start. Now a lot of 
them know that what I'm bringing is truth, you know, but I have been accused by some haters on YouTube of, how come you don't show the fix? Well, most of the early videos that I've, I've done is troubleshooting only. I'm not doing the fix. I tell Pete what to do or the other garages I work for and they change the parts, but cool, you know, should not be the parts changer. <laughs> yeah, no, but my true followers, my true subscribers, they know, they know what I'm bringing is truth because they're fixing cars using my method. So I don't want to mess this gasket up. You saw me tear the gasket on the other one. This is a pretty important gasket because of um, moisture. It seals the yeah. moisture out of the system. Ah, <laughs> damn it. Or can you get another one? Uh, I don't care for right now. There's your, there's your bottom teeth, right? That's your four pulse one. And then your single pulse is up top. I see that. And it looks like with that coil removed, that I do have some oil inside of this, which means the distributor shaft is worn in here. And there is some oil leaking in the distributor, which is not good. Oh, shit. Huge mistake. Look what I did. Which one's my good coil? Wait, this is the bad one. Are you sure? I'm positive. Did you just see me set I that there? I have on footage you said this. There. This, is, this the is the good one. one. <laughs> okay. I have no footage. You setting it right there. I know that's the good okay. one. Okay. <laughs> that that could have been a big mistake. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny if you put the same coil back in. That would not be funny because then everyone would be like, "See, Danner was wrong." No, Danner put the same coil back on. <laughs> you know what's one. funny is the thousand good comments. It's the one bad one that you remember. I could have done that in five minutes. Good for you. Thanks for sharing. How awesome you are. And how much I suck. See, that was a yawn by you. It's a good thing the mic is on me. <laughs> Caleb just yawned. Somebody's going to accuse you of being bored. I'm not bored. <laughs> Caleb's eating this stuff up, man. And he's getting paid to do it. He's getting paid to stand behind the camera and film and learn at the same time. Then he gets paid again to do the edits for me. And he's learning even more. It's a pretty sweet setup you got, Caleb. You get paid to learn in the field. Yeah. It's a pretty sweet setup for me, too, because now I got Caleb, who's helping me do this. this this is a hard thing to manage now the whole scanner danner thing and really to get any work done at all is like it's hard it's not as easy as people think you shoot YouTube videos for a living no I teach at a school troubleshoot at garages film edit answer questions even when I work my ass off, you still work your ass off. Yeah. The editing and all that. It's two full-time jobs. Yeah. Teaching and doing this stuff. Yeah, even when you're off turn, you're still doing it like full-time. Yeah. Okay, Caleb. I'm excited. We should have spark. As long as I didn't, well, two things. We put a used coil in this, an unknown used coil. And that's yeah. number one. And number two would be, did I, did I put the old coil back on? Oh, that sucks. I have another right here. Yeah, but I broke that one too. Yeah. Nope, that one's in better shape. This is why you don't do this stuff in the cold. This plastic gets... Breaky. Yeah, breaky. Are you gonna use the remote for that? I feel yeah, yeah, we'll do. Start. Yeah, we'll do the same thing. No, it won't start because I'm gonna have the the whole system apart still. Yeah. So actually, we're ready. Let me just turn the key back on. 
Okay, boys and girls, same test. I got a zip tie here in the way, but. You're gonna see if it jumps the. It should jump a real nice gap right here. If we did, if we did this right. All right, cranking it. You sure? You sure I didn't? I want you. You sure I didn't just put that old coil back in? Caleb, what is it? I put the old coil back. There's no way that same problem is on both these you, coils. I will show you the footage. There's no way. I will show you the footage. I remember you said it here, and unless you moved that over, I might have. Right here, I might have. I think I totally you just. Think you moved it over? Because I remember I was look, filming right forget here. Turning the the right forget turning the camera. Forget turning the camera off. I I'm gonna switch it anyway. This weak spark here. Damn it, son of a. Bitch. Can we just pretend that no, we just bolted on the old coil that I took off. It's your fault, Caleb. I'm blaming you. I'm gonna show you the footage after this, and you're gonna see. It I can't. There's no way. If that's well, the case, no, obviously it's the wrong coil. Wait, just no, you might be right. If that's the case, we got two bad coils, and let's talk about that for a second. I know with the six amps of current that I had, that I have a good ground on that igniter. I got case studies on that, bad grounds on igniters. It's actually in my book, and I have another video talking about it. I just believe we did something dumb, and I literally just put on. I had to. There's no way I have weak spark on both of these coils, Caleb. There's just no way. It's not possible. You must have moved that first one over. I probably did. One down. I probably did. Because all I remember is you setting it there, and I got like a shot of it ah, too. So stupid! I feel like a fool. I mean, it's. Oh, oh. What the hell is that? Me just blowing a fuse. Cause I got the key on. <laughs> so now it gets even. Now it gets even more complex because that little arc right there was me grounding out coil positive. I think I have that on footage too. <laughs> and the problem with that is now when we get this other coil back on, we got to make sure we still have battery voltage there. I'll check that real quick, but okay. uh, so stupid. <laughs> Turn the key on. Do I have battery voltage here is the first question. I do. So I didn't blow the fuse. Okay. <laughs> I should have good spark here. Yeah. Look at the distance that bad boy jumps. Nice. You see that when I pulled that away? Watch where it went. All right, that's what we want. I freaking bolted on the bad boy. I can't believe I did that. That's such a rookie mistake. That's what I get for hurrying. Let's hear this car run. All right, now here's the thing, right? In all of this right now, we have been cranking this engine over, all right? And we have had injection pulse, okay? So remember me talking about the low compression yeah. and that you can have a collapsed lifter. Something else that can give you a low compression sound is a flooded cylinder. Our injectors have been firing the whole time. Our all right, where is my rotor at? There's one there. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Denzo. I'm putting a used rotor on. Don't care which one it is. And those are spline, Caleb. You can't put the rotor on wrong. They only, it only goes one way. Anyway, my injectors, guys, were firing the whole time that we've been cranking this. Although we have had the injectors unplugged, so let's plug these back in. But this engine would have been getting flooded every time it cranked. Uh, so it might not start still. Well, it should, it should start, but when it starts, it's gonna run like crap for a minute or two because all the spark plugs are all wet with fuel. Make sense? Yeah. Where does that fuel go if it's flooded? Like it goes um, into the combustion chamber, and that's a great question because if there's enough of it, it'll make it past the rings and down into the crankcase. And it will literally go into the engine oil. And so you can have cars that come in the shop that when you get um, a case like this where you have a faulty coil, that what you need to sell the customer is an oil change. And the reason you sell them an oil change 
is you have this fuel diluted oil that's sitting in the crankcase. Yeah. So that's where some of it goes. Most of it goes in the tailpipe and into the exhaust. Sorry, most of it goes out of the exhaust valve and into the exhaust system and will sit in the, in the, you know, the cat, the catalytic converter, the muffler, the tailpipe. It's gonna stink like gas pretty bad when we start this. This freaking fart can. That? Well, it's not a fart can. A fart can's for the exhaust. It's just this wet air intake that's on this. I say wet air because if it gets into a too deep of water, you know, suck in all kind of water into his engine with this stupid air cleaner design. Some young punk kid owned this before my son. This is what these kids do. You think you're going to take this 80 horsepower engine and make it have more horsepower by putting on this different air intake. It's ridiculous. Why would you think that? Because that's what advertisers try to sell you. You buy this pipe and you read the advertisement. It says 15% horsepower gain. That's bullshit. It does is suck the water into the... Yeah, the only time something like this would help is if you redesign the engine, change the cam, change the head, make the engine breathe differently, and then the factory air cleaner box becomes a restriction. Then you put one of these on. This just stupid stuff. All right, this car should... It actually should fire right up. Now, it might be a little bit flooded, but key is on. Injectors are plugged in. We'll continue to use this. It's flooded. That just changed. You hear the way that's cranking? You hear that sound too? Yeah. What's that? Fuel pump running. Well, um, that's just a fuel pump. Yeah, no, I would it be that I don't think sort of? no, I don't think this is going to make a difference. I know my engine's flooded. So if I do let's do this. Let's unplug these injectors. Make them not fire. That's what it is. And my battery's weak too. What we have is some severely fouled spark plugs. I'm holding the RPM up to let it clean the plugs off. Probably a lot of smoke coming out of the tailpipe right now. I was just seeing if there was a bunch of smoke. There's not. We're good. Don't crank the engine over with your remote while the car is running. That was the starter engaging because I flipped the switch by accident. another successful case study hope you guys like that one let me shut this off and do a wrap up if you guys have any questions about the ignition system operation or design on this I'd be more than happy to do a classroom type setting and a follow-up video to uh, kind of explain this whole system maybe in a little bit more detail. I think we did pretty good though, Caleb, as far as what we did. I understood it all. 
And again, any questions, put them in the comments of this video. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, that one was fun. I apologize for the little mishaps along the way, but that's what happens when you do things live. A little embarrassed about pulling this coil off and putting the exact same coil back on again. But it happens. I almost forgot. You guys were thinking, wait, I want to see the coil primary current ramp pattern. That's exactly what I was thinking. Me too, Caleb. <laughs> no, you weren't. All right, um, I'm not going to reset this up for crank. We're going to do this running, so it's going to look a little bit different. we to be careful. We're going to have noise from these plug wires now that we have spark. So I'm going to kind of move these out of the way. That's good. I'm going to start the car back up. We'll do this live. This is going to look a little different. Oh, I can already see that end. Yeah, though. notice the turn on. Let's go. Yeah, 20 milliseconds is good, but right, totally different looking. Now you can't really see a turn on oscillation, but you see that you don't have that little straight up line at the beginning. Yeah. That one little subtle piece That's says crazy. sorted secondary wind. No, I'm sorry, let's be clear. Not sorted secondary winding, but sorted secondary. Like you can have a, a crust spark plug that's the gaps closed on a single coil system that'll give you the same look. I have some case studies on that too. I'll make sure I put some links for that. It's Jake. Hey, it's Jake. Yeah. He's smiling because his car is running. Yeah. We actually were able to fix it. I had a used part from your old engine to put in here. It was a zero cost fix. That's good. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Good wrap up having Jake here. This is Jake. <laughs> he just got back from school. So there you go. You get your car back, man. Sweet. Caleb, thank you. Guys, sure. thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Battery's dead. Damn it. Well, it's a good thing I misdiagnosed my smoke detector from being low on battery because I have a battery. I saved them. I put new ones in it, but that's pretty good jolt. That was my test for. <laughs> Remember me doing that to you as a kid? Yeah. Making you lick a battery? I think it was Jake and he no. cried. I felt so bad. First time I felt I did, so bad. I had, um, we had like these walkie talkies that were like a headset, like those red ones. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And we had to change the battery on it and you told me to check to see if the battery was good and I didn't know how and you made me lick it. <laughs> and I thought it was the funniest thing. Did you think it was funny or did you cry? I don't think I cried. You were older, older than Jake was. Maybe. Jake, oh, uh, the first time Jake did it. He, he was too young to make him lick a 9-volt battery. <laughs> it's what you do with your firstborn. Actually, it's what you do with your fourthborn. Right? You pretty much torture them. Anyway. Hey. And this one? Yeah, so be careful with 9-volt batteries throwing them in your garbage. I mean, you can cause a fire with these if there's charge to it and there's anything metal when you put it in there. But, you know, I usually, yeah, it's safe to put in the garbage. Uh, get that on film. Look at my arm. Uh. <laughs> Here, put that back on there. Here, I got it. I got it. How did that happen? I don't know. It didn't feel good. Uh. Don't, don't keep that. Outtakes, boogies.